Not many products are cool enough for me to whip out my cool product glasses, but the all new GeForce GTX 670 from Nvidia and its partners is definitely that. So this is an updated, slightly cut down version of the Kepler GPU that we first saw in the GTX 680, but it comes in at a significantly lower price and delivers nearly all of the same performance of the GTX 680 with the same features and benefits that came along with this new architecture. So stay tuned, we're going to tell you all about this exciting new graphics card, cover a little bit of performance, as well as tell you about the features that really set it apart from the competition. Now the first thing that stands out about the GeForce GTX 670 is the fact that, like I said before, its specs are so similar to the GTX 680. So you've cut down a few of the CUDA cores, you've also knocked down the clock speed a little bit, although that can be addressed, more on that later. And finally, you have... No, that's it. So instead of knocking down the memory speed or the memory interface, NVIDIA has opted not to do that. So that's it. A few fewer CUDA cores and a slightly lower clock speed. However, at launch, the GTX 670 was already available with a wide variety of aftermarket solutions, including factory OC reference cards from the likes of MSI, including completely non-reference boards from the likes of Galaxy, so this is using dual 92mm fans, an upgraded PCB with 6 plus 8 pin power, whereas the standard card only has two 6 pins, as well as, you know, like a cool glowing logo and all that kind of stuff. And again, factory overclocked, so some of these factory overclocked cards are pretty darn near a GTX 680 in terms of performance. So what does that mean in terms of the positioning of this graphics card? Well, one, it blows away the card that it replaces, the GTX 570, and it's actually closer to competing with the 7970 versus the 7950. However, bear in mind, guys, that the 7970 has a fair bit of overclocking headroom, and that will help it to make up some of that ground, especially if you are into the dark art of overclocking. Now let's talk key features for the GTX 670. Many NVIDIA technologies we've seen before. Up to three-way SLI, 3D Vision Surround, Adaptive V-Sync, which allows you to get the best of both worlds, that is smooth frame rates with no tearing when you're above the refresh rate of your monitor, and it prevents that huge drop in FPS when you go just under the refresh rate of the monitor by dynamically adjusting whether your V-Sync's on or off. GPU Boost is another big one that carries over from the GTX 680, which takes the power target of your graphics card, and then make sure that you are getting the highest clock speed possible without breaking through that threshold in order to get the best performance you can. It's also available in 2 gig or 4 gig configurations and I mentioned 3D Vision Surround but what I didn't mention is that just like the 680 it can do it off a single card. So in the past you had to have SLI to get 3D Vision Surround. Now you can run three monitors in 3D Vision at the same time off a single card plus a fourth auxiliary monitor for monitoring, you know, your system temperatures or your email or whatever else you're interested in. Last but not least, it is one of the most power efficient, high performance graphics cards I've ever seen. In spite of its dramatically better performance, the GTX 680 not only draws less power than a GTX 5... Did I say 680? 670 not only draws less power than a 570 at load, but also at idle. So no matter what you're doing, your GTX 670 is going to draw very little power. Now here's a cool fact. On this test bench, we draw a total of about 75 to 80 watts at idle with a single card installed. You add more cards in SLI, we added two more cards and it idles at only 100 watts. That means that your gaming rig is not going to be a huge drain on your power bill even when you're checking your email, which is fantastic. Now just for the sheer ludicrousness of it, we've set up three GTX 670s with three 1080p 3D vision ready monitors, although we're not running our demo in 3D, just simply because you can't really see anything when we do. I want you guys to keep your eyes on that FPS counter over in the far right corner. So you're not going to see a dip below 30 FPS no matter what I'm doing over here, whether there's explosions or gunfire or, you know, Grenades that I, oh wow, I think I almost threw that myself. I never claimed to be good at video games, just, you know, good at uh, configuring machines that are good at video games. There we go. So I'm going to show you guys in a moment here what kind of a graphical preset 
I was using for that fairly intense combat scene. Slick, do not laugh at my gaming prowess. It is hard to sit up here and talk about the, you know, the product that we're looking at at the same time as playing a video game. Check this out, guys. Options, video, bam! Ultra presets at 5760 by 1080. Yes, that performance is real. Yes, three-way SLI does scale. Is it as efficient as two-way or a single card? Maybe not, but it still makes for a phenomenal gaming experience. Now let's have a look at our Skyrim performance in three-way SLI with NVIDIA Surround. So you can see here that this game is running at a smooth 90 to 110 frames per second and not really dipping below 70 to 80 FPS uh, pretty much no matter what we're doing here. So you know, let me just draw my weapon and maybe we can like shoot an arrow at something. Let's create some action here. Aw oh, yeah. Some guy is all upset because I shot him. Oh, sweet, I'm getting help. I haven't actually played this game, so uh, this is just someone's, um, someone's save game that I borrowed. But I did play Oblivion, so I do somewhat know what I'm doing. Somewhat. I mean, that's why I use a bow from, like, two feet away. Bam! This is violent. Oh yeah. Okay, anyway, I think you guys pretty much get the point. Does the GTX 670 absolutely destroy Skyrim in terms of performance? The answer is a resounding yes. And of course there's the classic, but can it run crisis? And the answer is yes. We aren't at ultra, we are at very high. However, I am using the high res texture pack, which is pretty good considering that we only have two gig cards here. So if we had four gig cards, I would expect to see slightly better performance. Remember guys, when you're running a multi-card configuration, you only effectively have as much memory as you have on a single card. So if you have three 2 gig cards, you're still at 2 gigs effective memory because it has to store all of the texture information in all of the cards all at the same time. So we're not dipping below 30 FPS, which in Crisis 2 actually delivers a very satisfactory gaming experience because of the motion blur and just the tolerance that the engine has for lower frame rates. I think this pretty much wraps it up. If you want to see single monitor performance, then you should probably check out the, uh, the review that I did on my Linus Tech Tips channel. But other than that, thank you for checking out this NCIX Tech Tips episode on the GTX 670, and don't forget to subscribe.